All right, so we need to define a few terms and what we are, uh, what our goal of the class is. Uh, of course, we've got search engine optimization and search engine marketing. So you've probably heard of SEO before, and earlier I mentioned we're also going to cover SEM. <clears throat> and in short, a very basic definition, like I said, is what you do what you do on your website to get traffic and SEM what you do outside your website to get traffic well what we mean here of course is let's say I've got a business and I'm gonna use the fictional business Victor's Bakery in the class I've got this bakery on Main Street uh, the goal of my business is to sell cupcakes and birthday cakes and all of that stuff. So the goal of my business is to sell food, sell baked goods, and make money. Well, then I need to do everything that I can to that end to make my business a success. Uh, in the real world, I would be engaging in various forms of marketing. We'll say real world example, pictures bakery sells baked goodies. All efforts then must be to that end. I need to uh, do everything that I can to reach that end of selling. So in the real world, what might you say is an example of real... Well, let's back up one moment. What? How would you define marketing? Anyone have an opinion? What would you think of, what's the definition, or what do you think marketing is? Or examples, or anything? Any that creates awareness. That's way too high class. Let's think, let's say, what's another term for marketing? Advertising. advertising. Yes, you're on the right track, but advertising. So, advertising. Uh, marketing, advertising, or awareness for a brand. So, okay, so if we have one definition of what marketing is, it's advertising or building awareness. Real world examples of marketing for my business, Victor's Bakery, might be what? What kind of uh, advertising and such might we do in the real world uh, to market my business? Yes. Say that one more time. Print, yes. Uh, print content, yes. Media. Not quite uh, in terms of real world. You, uh, okay. at the moment, talking about real world, but you're on the right track regarding the other aspect. A flyer or a banner? Mm -hmm. Yeah, print content, flyers, banners, etc. Anything else? What about commercials? Yes. Uh, radio. Commercials, radio commercials, TV commercials. So here we go, we've got a few examples. Um, here are some real world examples of marketing to build awareness for the business. Um, something physical in the real world. Uh, now there is also that, um, that brand new form of marketing that is sweeping the nation. Uh, guy on the corner flipping that sign. <laughs> So um, these are versions then of real world marketing. And <clears throat> the point of these is to build awareness for my business so I can get traffic. In the real world, that traffic is physically traffic, people coming into my business because ultimate goal, people walk into my shop and buy. If you distill it down, yes, I have the passion for cooking that I learned from my grandmother that I want to pass on to a new generation. But ultimately, I've got a business where I'm trying to sell something. And in this class and most of my classes, I, I, I focus on it in those terms about having a business or a product and a brand. But SEO can be applied to any online endeavor. Let's say I'm an artist, I paint. Let's say I'm an author, I write. Let's say I'm a band, let's say you know I'm a poet, whatever. I'm trying to get visibility for my works online. Let's say I'm that painter, and I'm not trying to sell my paintings. 
but I just want people to see my paintings, compliment them, maybe I want people to read my poetry, etc. I still want to engage in SEO. I still want uh, for people to know about my writings or my paintings. I'm not selling them, but I still want people to at least see them, comment on them, maybe feel something. So I may be covering over and over product and brand and business, but all of these concepts of SEO and SEM apply to anything online. Let's say I'm, I'm trying to sell stuff on eBay. I have a garage full of stuff. I'm trying to sell that. SEO would be helpful for you as well. Just because I use terms of you know business and brand and such doesn't mean it doesn't apply to what you're doing. So you can define your ultimate goal as necessary. I'm saying ultimate goal, people walk into my shop, buy stuff. Uh, if I'm that artist, well, my ultimate goal is simply for people to appreciate my, my paintings. That's it. But still, I need to do everything that I can with real world marketing, and then we're about to get to digital marketing, uh, to that end, uh, people buy. So then, contrasting online world examples. Um, I could have it that still, I'm not selling my cupcakes online. Maybe I'm not shipping throughout the state or the country or the world. I still want people to come to my business on Main Street and buy my cupcakes. But now I have to think about online or digital examples of marketing and I heard earlier social media good what are other digital examples perhaps of marketing or advertising on online social that of this of course covers Facebook Twitter etc but perhaps what are other examples you might think of yeah the website itself good that's sometimes one that we don't that we sort of take for granted but that is something as well I have a I have a business online I probably should have a website that also markets it and advertises it anything else besides website Podcast. podcasts or multimedia you know video like let's say YouTube so we have these different ways online to also market our business I could be tweeting about my business. I could be posting on Facebook. I could be creating live Facebook chats uh, or broadcasts. I could be uh, snapping on Snapchat about my business. I have a website where people can come and comment and, and, and read. Uh, we could do their blogging as well. Uh, we could have uh, people reading articles that I'm writing, listening to podcasts I'm recording, watching videos I'm creating. So these are other forms of marketing all add up to content so I don't have bold on this I'll make it like this content um, we'll say your content online is what helps you get found. Your content in the real world is what helps you get found. I created this business on Main Street, but unless people walk in front of it, they don't know it exists. Well, they will know I exist on Main Street when I've got word of mouth that someone came to the business and told me how, uh, told their friends how great it was and I get more traffic. Well, in the real world, people know my business exists on Main Street when I put radio ads out, or TV ads, or flyers, or the person on the corner flipping the sign. So that's the content of the real world of my business. Flyers, commercials, banners, all of that. It's content. In the digital world, my content is writing these blog articles, creating these videos, uh, posting on Instagram. That's, again, content. So your content online, I guess we'll also put your content online and offline, is what helps you get found. And that takes us back to SEO versus SEM. We 
which is again up on the definition at the top. Stuff you do on your website, stuff you do outside of your website. They're both important. So this class, uh, I've taught it for, uh, this version of the class I've taught for the last five years. And every once in a while, uh, things change online about the search engines. Uh, and um, what has been constant all along, however, has been the content. There, there used to be tips and tricks and advice about do this, don't do that, to get found by Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever. But what's always been consistent is the content. So we'll cover content creation strategies uh, and tangible things, of course. online you're creating this content and it's being collected um, by search engines search engines find and collect content so that users can find what they need search engines. Uh, what's a search engine you might have heard of? Google. That little website that could. Okay, any other search engines out there? That's the only one that exists, right? Home Advisors. Home Advisors. Hmm, hadn't heard about that one. It might be specialized, but I'll, I'll note it in a moment. What's that? DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo, yeah. DuckDuckGo. Uh, any others? YouTube, uh, not quite a search engine that searches the whole web, but it's got an ability to search. Yes? Firefox, Firefox has an easy built-in search, but it doesn't have its own search engine. Here's a few good ones. Now, uh, what's, the, what's the classic one from the 90s that used to rule the earth and now it doesn't quite? Yeah. Yeah. Yahoo. Yeah. It's still around. People still use it, but... Uh, back in the 90s, this was the big search engine, and then now Google is the big one. So there's more than one search engine out there. Google is the big famous one, of course. But there's many ways to search online. All of their purposes here, these search engines, all of their purposes is to find and collect content so a user can then uh, find it and, and use it. So uh, in the class, we're going to be covering uh, Google and Bing most extensively. Those are the two big search engines. I've got to double check the latest stats, but uh, Google at some point, what would you say Google's market share is? How many people use Google? 80? Um, 90? 90? 95? Um, it's about 67. You may think, well, I thought Google was the only search engine out there, and everyone says, uh, Google it. You know, it's such a, it's such a, genericized word now, Google it means search online. Yes, at a certain point they were, they were up to those levels, uh, but they have decreased somewhat, and, and again, it, it might be a range of a few percentages, but they're not the most number one search engine of all, even though they have the most clout, the most visibility, and all of that. And Bing is at about 20%. Now, how many of you had ever heard of Bing before this class? A few people. So. It's not as famous as, as, as Google, but Bing is also important. We'll cover why a little later. And these other ones, you know, that's probably like 1% or we'll be generous, 5%. And Yahoo. In the 90s, it had like 98% uh, usage. It was the most biggest search engine. And then now it's really, really decreased. Uh, I doubt that it's like a 10% or so. Question. Google is still the top one, even though it's not, even though it doesn't have a hundred percent. It's still the most of, of, of these right here. So we're going to cover Google and Bing, um, how to optimize ourselves so that those search engines find our content, so that when people search, they find our website. So we will look at the tips and techniques, the do's and don'ts, and all of that of each of the search engines. Now uh, we'll do an activity here. 
go ahead and open your web browser. Any one you'd like. We've got all of the uh, popular ones down here. And then let's go to google.com. Okay, so google.com, we've heard about it before, we've seen it, we've probably used it. It's a search engine. It's evolved over the years, but the big idea is there is a box where you type what you're looking for, and it searches the internet, basically, and then it gives you a result. Okay, let's do this. Let's search for you. Let's search for your name. Search for yourself in the way that you are known. If my name is, you know, William uh, Jefferson Clinton the third, I'm going to search for myself as Bill Clinton. Right? Search for yourself the way you are most known. Question. This one is the question. You know, on the bottom it says Google search and then I feel lucky. Yeah. What's the difference between those two different searches? Well, when you uh, press enter mm -hmm. after you search, it's the same thing as doing the search. Okay, but I feel lucky it doesn't mean anything. No, it'll randomly show you a website from, from its archive oh. from somewhere in the world. I don't know if there was a special uh, quick mm -hmm. Yes. What would you consider Chrome? Would that be a browser or a search engine? Um, it's a web browser. All of these that we've got listed down here are web browsers. They help you uh, go to websites. But since Google Chrome is owned by Google Company, which is the same that has Google Search, they integrate it in so deeply that it looks like it's the same thing. But technically, the purpose of the task of Google Chrome is just to visit a website. So I'm going to search for myself. And you may have noticed as you are typing, it may be popping up with suggestions and such. Just ignore that for the moment. Search for yourself. Uh, search for yourself as you are commonly known. And then you can press Enter. Uh, this is obviously, if you've heard, never heard of this, this is known as Googling yourself. You are searching for yourself online. Now, I'm going to often use the generic term of searching and searching online and such. I'm not going to say, let's go Google this. Google is not the only search engine out there. We will see why the other ones are also important. So I'm using the more generic term of search. But here I am searching using the Google search engine, the Google website that searches the internet. And what I've done is I've searched for the term, or the query, Victor Campos. And I get 1.7 million results in half a second. And so I get a bunch of these results here at the, on the first page. Do you remember uh, a little while ago, even, uh, where these used to be numbered? Do you remember there was a number one and a number two and all of that? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But these used to be numbered. So our goal in SEO was, I want to be number one on the Google search results. Google changed their algorithm, changed their technique. And now they don't display numbers. And maybe it doesn't even matter anymore, but there's those little things that change every once in a while. The search engines change their algorithm. They change their system every once in a while. And that's because there's a constant fight against spam. So important to note here, search engines change their algorithms all the time in a constant fight against spam. If I can make a website about my business, a spammer can make 10 websites about 10 fake businesses. So they can flood the search engines, they can game the search engines so that people get tricked into going to their website, buying fake products, getting their credit card stolen, getting a virus. You know, those spam companies, uh, these, these, these businesses are, are very, 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 like 99% of the time, very shady. But they, you don't think that they are trying to engage in SEO tactics to get high results? You don't think they aren't creating content that will get them be more visible? Well, the search engines then are, have to fight back all the time and change their algorithm, their, their software, their method to discount the spammers. The way that affects us, we then need to be aware of what our uh, spam techniques to avoid. We need to know what the spammers are doing so that we don't do it because we don't want to be labeled a spammer. 
we don't want to be downvoted or penalized by the search engines uh, because we will see that unfortunately regarding SEO sad truth is um, search engines operate under guilty until proven innocent because there's so much spam out there um, it's more effective for them to, once the search engine determines something is spam, it gets downvoted, it gets deprecated, it gets pushed out of the way. And therefore, some of us may accidentally fall under that dragnet, and then we get penalized, uh, because I heard a cool technique to get search engine results is to put a paragraph of hidden text on your home screen. I'll cover what that means a little later. But that was... That's spam technique. That's a way to trick the search engine. And I heard it was really cool, so I did it. But then the search engine says, that's a spam technique. You're using a spam technique. You're a spammer. And my website then gets penalized, and I appear on page 500 instead of page 1. So we really have to think about, we need to follow the rules of the search engine, the do's and don'ts. And unfortunately, whenever there's a problem, it's guilty and self proven innocent. It's often very difficult to fix something that has been labeled as spam because there's just so much spam. It's uh, they, they don't have people, you know, customer service tech support that you can really call and plead your case. Even through their email system, um, that gets abused. So we want to, from day one, do the right techniques, do the correct techniques uh, to be found and cataloged by the search engines so that we don't get penalized. But when you searched for yourself here, you get a bunch of results. How many of you found results that are of you? Raise your hand. A few people. So let's see on myself. The top result here is for Victor Campos at the Internet Movie Database. I'm not an actor, so that's not me. <laughs> Next up, Victor Campos at San Diego Continuing Education Rate My Professors. That is me. So there's a link there where you can go uh, read uh, and look at reviews about the classes I teach. There's a result on Facebook, Victor Campos Profiles. This is not pointing directly to one particular Victor Campos. This is a list of all Victor Campos's on Facebook. Victor Campos, our team, Manning and Cass, Elrod Ramirez, Tester. This is a law firm. I am not a lawyer. That's not me. It's some other business. What else? Pictures, none of these are mine. Your results, if you're curious and you search my name, your results may be different than my results. I'll explain why a little later. You may or may not have gotten images when you search for yourself. I'll explain why later. What else? There's Victor Campos, head of strategy, digital products, and marketing at LinkedIn. That's not me. Victor Campos, director of technology, PM Interactive at LinkedIn. That is me. So there's my LinkedIn there. There's a different Victor Campos Senior IT Security. That's not me. Some of them yes, some of them no. Lawyers, etc. Actors, etc. Um, and then maybe one day you'll look at this one right here, but not yet. And um, the results that appear here, some are me, some are not. Um, let's contrast these results with the other search engine we're also going to talk about in a different web browser. I opened up Chrome and I went to Google.com. I'm going to go to a different web browser, Firefox. If you opened Safari and went to Chrome, I mean went to Google, open Internet Explorer, and now we'll go to Bing.com. Let's go to the other search engine we're going to talk about. So in a different web browser, not a different tab, in a different web browser, go to Bing.com. B-I-N-G.com. And at Bing, uh, we get another search engine. It looks very different than Google. Uh, today is May 4th, which is the unofficial Star Wars holiday. So there's a shot from uh, the original Star Wars, Tatooine, of course. That's Luke's house. I'm sure you know that. And so uh, you get a colorful picture every day in the background. You get news headlines over here. Looks very different from, uh, Bing, uh, from Google. 
Not really, because the main idea still is search. There is still a spot for you. Enter your search term. Let's search for yourself uh, the same way, the exact same way you search for yourself in Google. You want to search for your name the same way that you searched in Google. Again, at the moment, ignore these results. Search, type, uh, press enter, or you can click the little magnifying glass. I get a page of results just like on uh, Google. Uh, it might look slightly different, and I might get different results and a different order of things. The number one result in my case here is again Victor Campos the actor on Internet Movie Database. Second result is a link to Facebook, whereas on Google it was a link to My Rate to My Professors and then Facebook. I get pictures. These look similar to the ones over there. Then we get the lawyer fourth place, where that lawyer was tenth place, more LinkedIn's, Spokio, Internet Movie Database, others, there's my Rate My Professor, there's my LinkedIn. So two of three or four of the same results came up in Bing as opposed to Google. They came out in a different order. Both of those had the number one result, or the top most result, of the actor, Victor Campos, born in 1935, um, appearing in such movies as Scarface. But besides that... Can you tell if any of these people are paying for the search? The ones that are paid will have listed as an ad. There will be a little marker that says ad. And at the moment, I don't. <clears throat> at the moment, I don't see any of those. So there will be. You're welcome. So there will be a little marker that says "add." Um, so, were there any results in Bing uh, that did not appear for you in Google? Anyone get that result? A few people. Okay. Now, is that good or bad? Trick question. It's not good or bad. It's just different. You could say it's bad in terms of, well, Google is the number one search engine in the world, and there wasn't a result from Bing, so that's bad. Uh, that's not bad, bad, in terms of you're thinking in terms of Google is the only search engine. As I said in this class, we're going to cover Google and Bing. And in a moment, I'll explain the importance of Bing. But I just want to compare and contrast results of these two search engines. The short answer is assume that both of them are being used. Yes, one is being used more than the other. But assume both of them are being used, They're the top two search engines. So it would be important for me then to appear on both search engines, no matter the content, but I want to appear on both search engines. Let's go back to Google. And this time, if you've got a business, Let's search for the name of your business. Search for the name of your business exactly uh, as it's spelled. Don't worry about putting anything special if you know techniques about zip codes or uh, any of that extra stuff. Let's just see what a plain old search of your company name as it's usually spelled. Let's see the results on both Google and Bing. Let's compare and contrast your business. If you don't have a business, you can use my business right there, PMD Interactive, or any other name <laughs> of a business. I'm going to search in Google and in Bing. Let's see what we get on both. OK, so when I search for myself, my business on Google, I'm number one. Great, I'm at the top. I have perfect SEO. No, this is a trick question also. Um, I'm searching for the exact name of the business. Google and Bing then show me results with that exact term. The top result is the website. So our company's website is number one. After that is our Yelp. So Yelp reviews. After that is our Twitter. Then our YouTube. Then something called Alignable, which is 
I believe it's like a directory of businesses that's trying to compete with Yelp and such. <coughs> There's then our Facebook graphics regarding the business. Moveitapp.com, a bus and light rail app. LinkedIn. And so all of these results, except one, are about our business. The last one, Psychomedics Corporation Interactive Chart. That's not us. That is some uh, medical company or something. So I get a page of results. 352,000 results in less than half a second on Google. On Bing, if you compare, there's already some big differences. The first result here, the font looks bigger. I have these. I have a map. Well, it looks like obviously I paid to be so promoted on Bing. No, we haven't engaged in any payments of uh, any of these search engines for top results. But breaking down what is here, we have the home page. We have these known as deep links. There's something like that on Google, but maybe it's not even noticeable. There's about services, work, news. You can click services, and that's a deep link. It's a, li it's a link deeper than the home page, the home screen. There's a sub page on the website. There's the home page, sub page. Google does give the deep links in this case, but not as prominently, not as obvious as Bing. Here they say, um, here's the services. Go look at their services. Uh, here's what they do regarding branding. Here's one of the people on the team. It's not just myself. There's other people in, 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 this, in my company here. But you get these deep links that it feels are more useful for the average person. I want to know what are their services. I heard about them, but what do they offer? So here, much more obviously, there's a link to a sub-page. There's also a map over here about where the business is at and the address and phone number and such. I don't see any of that at all on Google. And again, we did not pay to place that there. It's just that the search engine algorithm feels that this result is better than um, than a plain old result like this. So both Bing and Google are searching the same internet. Search the same internet, but might give different results because of their algorithm their software, their technique that determines uh, this is the best result. If you step back, Google and Bing are search engines. They are websites that catalog information. But they're also part of a company. And the company, most companies are usually trying to make money. So the Google company, the Bing company are ultimately trying to make money. They're showing you great results and it looks like, wow, this is an amazing tool. I can find anything I want in the world. but uh, ultimately behind the scenes they're trying to make money like any legitimate uh, capitalist organization so they believe they have the better techniques to give you results each search engine yes so both of my searches have deep links but the one on Bing are significantly or the links on Bing are significantly less relevant hmm. is there a way to beat that algorithm yes now we shouldn't think about in terms of beating it, because that's what that's how spammers operate. But there are terms, there are ter there are ways. Once we set up our webmaster tools starting next week, there are ways for us to suggest and to follow the rules of the search engines uh, to uh, have it be more favorable to our results. Each search engine believes it can believes it uh, has the best results. And that's what we'll be covering a lot in the class about what are these techniques, what, are the, what is the algorithm, what are the ways to, again, not to use that term, but it's an obvious one, how to game the system. How do we, um, 
how do we uh, play the game of these search engines to get ranked well? Uh, we will use the more legitimate terms, but just to make it plain, what do we need to do to uh, convince the search engines that our results are the best? That's what we'll be covering in the class. So when you then search in, in Bing to, for your business, uh, you get a bunch of results. Uh, how many did it say here? 710,000 compared to 352,000. Now, is that better? One search engine gave more results than the other. Which is a better result here, based on numbers? Yes, it's a trick question. Because no matter how many uh, results you get, the most important is again, prominence and all of that. Now, it's a trick question also here. I'm very prominent in both results. Uh, but if I was doing a different kind of search that we'll look at in a moment, then, then that matters. Here, all the results are my business on both search engines. So even though this has that many and this has that many, in this case, there's no importance to how many. It could have given me a billion results. But it only shows me 10 at a time. Page 1, 10 results. Page 2, 10 results. And how many of you ever hang out on the third page of search results? Almost no one. Most people assume first page of results, best results, I'll click on one of these. I don't care then if I got even 50 more results. Most people are not going to go past. And here's you know Bing saying, yeah, let's go to page 5. Let's go to page 50. And Google is saying, uh, here's all your results. Google, let's go to page 10. No one goes to those pages. Yes, you might because you think you get the best results. Great. But most people don't go past very deeply into one, two, or even three results deep. Because the search engines get better and better and better at finding the right content when you search. So let's see what else. Um, big differences here. Uh, it's showing uh, products for shopping and such completely unrelated to our business, but these say ads. So someone paid uh, to have these results happen here. We'll cover what that means later. There's our Twitter. There's our Yelp. Oh, there's videos. So our company creates videos. Videos on a variety of topics. There's no mention of that on, you, on, um, on Google, except for a link here that's not obvious. PMD Interactive's YouTube account. But over here, it's very obvious. Here are the videos that PMD Interactive has created. Go check out this one with 4,000 views, or this one with 85,000 views, or 3,000 views. Again, this is not something we paid for. This is all through the free aspects. <coughs> IT Plate 5, PMD Interactive, it's one of our um, uh, clients. Uh, plates. This is a, a restaurant client, one of the plates they sell, one of the dishes. Uh, our LinkedIn, our uh, Yahoo result, MapQuest, um, Pinterest, Google Plus. So just showing differences in results on both search engines. Thousands of results, hundreds of thousands of results, but oftentimes the first 10 or 20 are the ones that matter for most people. For most people, only the first page of results matter. And maybe you've heard of, well, if you go deeper there, you might find better results. I read an article about that. Maybe, maybe you go to different results because you don't trust the first page because that's where people pay. Maybe. But just in general, most of the population um, they care about the first page. Again, you yeah. said if it's a paid, it'll show up as ad, so you can tell who paid as it. Yes, now the thing is that there are lots and lots of people that go online, but that doesn't mean they're very tech savvy. There are people that are going to see that's an ad and not understand what that is, or not see it or ignore it or not care. So um, 
if we've used the web for a while and we're savvy about it, yeah, I'm going to ignore every ad. I know that's fake. They paid for it. But there are millions of people that don't know that or don't care, and that's still a result. Lastly, what we'll do before the break, okay, I searched for my name, I searched for my business. Now I want to search for what the business is about. I want to search for something that we do. One of the things we do is web design. Now, again, if you know a little bit about the search engines, we're going to do a very basic kind of search first. I'm not going to search for the zip code. I'm not going to search for a location. Just one keyword or phrase about what your business does. Victor's Bakery, I'm going to search for cookies. PMD Interactive, we do web design and such. I'm going to put web design. If I'm a lawyer, I'm going to look up family law. Right? Don't get too fancy yet. We're just going to search for a basic keyword or phrase about what your business is or does. And I'm going to compare that with both results, uh, with both search engines. In both search engines, search for that keyword about what your business is. On Google, clearly marked ads, number one result, Wix.com. While I was searching for PMD Interactive, I heard that they do websites. So I'm looking here. Uh, I don't see them. But I see number one result, design a stunning website, Wix.com. Maybe I'll hire them instead of PMD Interactive. They're number one, right? Top of the top, best of the best. Here is obviously then a paid result. They paid X amount of money to be number one. Okay, then the second best result, logodesignvalley.com, website design services, free domain name and hosting, second place. Then I see a map uh, that seems to know my general area, Kearney Mesa, Sarah Mesa area, and it's showing me results over here, NFY Interactive, Web Reputation Builders, Skybox Creative, well, those seem like they're paid, that's too good to be true, I'll skip those. Then after that, I get top 15 web designers in San Diego. So maybe I could read that. Well, that's more of an article or an aggregate, a rating site. It's not an actual business. Clutch.co, top web designers. OK, so another list that marks the top designers, not, a, not the company result. Web design search in Yelp. Oh, so one search engine is going to take me to another search engine to find more results. What else? Do Dogandrooster.com. Here's the first result of a real web design business, not an ad, not a directory. First result. Then after that is the Wikipedia article on what is web design. Then after that, tinyfrog.com, pixel, pixelmepink.com. Uh, oh, and then Mesa College's web design program. Why search for someone to build your website? Learn to build your own website. Mesa College. So these results, Southwestern College, so these results, I did not expect to find my business. You shouldn't have expected to find your business. I'm just showing you results in one search engine on a topic compared to the other. Oh, there's Wix again, number one also marked as an ad, a little less obviously. But their top result, number one, the font is a little bigger than the rest. On the side, there is the Wikipedia article, an excerpt. Instead of going off to read the Wikipedia article buried in here somewhere, there's an excerpt here, too. It's, it's a lot shorter. Here's a longer ex excerpt from the same Wikipedia article, ads, ads, skipping all of that. Um, Mr. Campos? Yes. Does Bing know that you're searching from San Diego? Yes, most of the search engines nowadays, even Google, know that you're searching from a certain location because our web browsers give away this information. Our web browsers tell a website where we're coming from. That is something that is automatic nowadays which can be turned off, 
but the default is that most search engines are broadcasting some piece, pieces of information about us and the search engines can read that information and therefore it sort of knows I'm somewhere in San Diego Bing's wasn't as accurate it is saying the gas lamp and Google is saying here in Terra Mesa so they both know you see the Google map is a little closer to where we're at but yes they both know our general location because the web browsers Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, all of those, they give away some little bits of information of us. This area is service for the and their main connection uses Sierra Mesa. Oh, okay, interesting. Is it based on IP address? Yes, because uh, we, ha we leave a little trail on the internet. One of these things is our IP address, which is our unique address on the internet and uh, based on that IP address uh, we may get these results uh, but in this case uh, because our campus is part of the whole San Diego City College <coughs> district it seems that it might be giving results closer to City College because that's where the main computers are of our campus it's not fully accurate in our case but it has to do yes with uh, that sort of uh, metadata that, that we have online. So would it pick up if my IP address is here in San Diego and I'm on the East Coast, but it's still here in San Diego, or do you know? If you were to change your IP address, if you're in New York and you change your IP address to one in San Diego, then yes, it would try to give you results in San Diego, because it sort of sees you're in San Diego, you change your address. So these results that I'm seeing here, I get different ones. There's Vullet. They were not listed on the Google results. And NFY was, but here they are in third place. Then after that, webdesign.org. Here are tutorials for me to learn how to do web design. Here's a news article about web design. So two days ago, um, sustainable website design for a greener world. This is an article about web design. More articles. Wikipedia link. GoDaddy, go buy a website on, on GoDaddy. Images of a web design. Directory listing for more web designers. There's no result in Bing that is a company that does web design. Well, discounting the map for a moment, there's no result, uh, like over on Google, of a website. There's articles, there's aggregators, there's directories. Yes. Yes. That's what we're getting at. That's why I'm showing both search engines. You may have heard of Google for the past 20 years. It's a it's a it's a um, it's a verb now. Google it. But we do ourselves a disservice if we only focus on optimizing ourselves for Google, because Bing is the second biggest search engine. Uh, so it would behoove us to put in the little bit of extra effort to also optimize ourselves for the second biggest search engine, because their results we're seeing here are different. And maybe you've never heard of it, and you've never used it, and you don't know anyone who's ever used Bing, but people do use it. Like I said, 20% of traffic or so. So it behooves us to also optimize ourselves on Bing. Victor, yes. sometimes web browser ask me for location. Yeah. So it's possible block or permit. Yes. If I block location. What's what was the last thing you said? Yeah. What happened? Right. What happens if you block it? Yeah. If. Uh, it depends on what you're searching for, and if you if it asks you, can we use your location? And if you if you click block, it will try to uh, give you results, uh, perhaps based on your history. I've been visiting different kinds of websites, and it knows a little bit about that, so it could try to give you results, thinking, okay, you seem to be in New York, so we'll give you New York results. Uh, so um, that that's what happens if you if you don't allow it, it may give you results that may work or not. Okay. Okay. Did they use cookies for for that? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
All right, so we're going to take our first break, but what I wanted to do was a couple of activities here where we use the two big search engines, and uh, we do a little bit of searching and comparing, contrasting the algorithm. One is not better than the other. We just need to know that they're different. Both of their goals, however, is to give the best results when someone searches. We tried to search for our business, and it didn't come up by using this kind of keyword. Well, you might have thought, well, you should have been searching this way over here to find the right result. Yes, that's going to be part of what we talk about in the class, about uh, what are our key keywords and how people search and all of that. We'll cover that, of course. I just wanted to show those two search engines. So we'll take our, our first break. When we come back, we'll do a little bit more theory and then a little bit more practice. It's 10.55. We'll be back at 11.05 uh, in 10 minutes, and then we'll go on.